Hello and welcome to this Sophistic tutorial about the substructure command of the Sophistic Bridge and Infrastructure Modeler, our tool for Revit. Today I want to talk about the basics which lie beneath the tool, meaning the very Revit functionalities that you can use to basically create any kind of geometry with the Sophistic Bridge and Infrastructure Modeler. So what do we actually use the substructure command for? We can use it to create any kind of parametric three-dimensional volume and place it along an alignment. So it is not necessary to create it parametrically, just the idea is we can and we can basically create any kind of three-dimensional volume in a Revit family to use it to be placed along the axis. So again, the basis for all that I want to talk about in this video and the next ones is a metric generic model adaptive Revit family. You can find it in the standard Revit templates when you create a new family for Revit. The next basis that we want to consider for the substructure command is that we only use one adaptive point, meaning that later on we have one specific insertion point where the rest of the volume that we create for this command can be placed. So again, this one parametric input point is the basis for all the volumetric elements we can then place with this tool. But before we can get started with using the tool itself, I want to talk in this tutorial about these very basics for creating those volumes, meaning the Revit basics. So here I have a couple or I have the method summed up for creating volumes. The first one is the revolve form, meaning a rotation along a separate line. Here you can see that I created a line and now I will also create a circle. These will be my references, so I want to create them as reference lines. I select both of them and click on create form and you can see the program is smart enough to recognize that this is going to be a rotation form along this middle line and I can modify the volume as I feel like it. Next up, we have the sweep form. The sweep form is first up based on a path that I write here defined with two lines and then a curvature on which I will then place a reference point to have a reference plane at the alignment, which can then be used to create something like, for example, a circle. This circle will be now again a reference line as well as my path. And once I select them and click on create form, the program will recognize the path and create the volume accordingly. Next up, we have the swept blend form. This is very similar to the sweep form because we first up need a path, but I will now create multiple reference points. And for each reference that I have now selected right here, you can see that I first always have to select the corresponding reference plane. You can see I can vary those circles, for example, in diameter, but I can create something completely different like a rectangle as well. And the program will then interpolate in between those geometries. Once again, first up, I create them as reference lines. And I click on create form. And here you can see the result. So again, the idea is to show you what kind of geometries you can create with which command. Last but not least, here we have the loft form. And the loft form allows us to first up select again the reference plane that we work in. That's always the basis for everything that we want to create. You can see here I created a rectangle. I select the second level. And next up, I do something very differently because I again once create a reference point. You can see I'm in the second level again, or still. Now I select the reference of my point to create another point right at 
the same point. So there are two points. This was also the warning right here. And I can give it an offset. This offset can now be once again referenced, but it is linked to this original point. So again, here is where the parametric aspect of Revit comes into play. You can see I selected now the reference plane of this point and created my reference geometry. Next, I will once again tell it to create reference lines for these lines that I created and I create the form. You can see that we can create very complex geometries also depending on secondary points as you can see here as I only moved the original point that was referenced to create a very complex and parametrizable geometry. So those are the principles that you can use for creating basically any kind of volumetric geometry with one reference insertion point. But to give you a little bit more praxis oriented examples, I also prepared two more videos coming after this one. In the first one, we will create a hexagon column. First up, we will talk about the divide path component, which can be used for very versatile use cases. And we will parametrize this column within its width and its height with parameters that are updatable with the substructure command. The third video will be about the T-beam column that you can see right here, where we will talk about nested families, meaning that the column itself is hosted by another family and used in this main family for the T-beam. Also, of course, everything parametrized.